I call the honourable <laughs> member Ian Lees Galloway. <laughs> Members uh, must call. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, let me say at the outset uh, that the Labour Party does support this bill, the third reading of, of this Misuse of Drugs Amendment Bill, as we have supported it uh, throughout every stage uh, of its passage through Parliament. We support any measure which reduces the harm caused by the abuse and misuse of mind-altering substances. However, whilst this bill will probably not make matters any worse, it will do really very little to reduce the harm caused by the particular set of mind-altering substances captured by the Misuse of Drugs Act. It is, in effect, merely tinkering with the current Act. If this Parliament is serious about tackling the issues of substance abuse and the effects of substance abuse both on individuals and on communities, then we will move with all practicable haste towards a total replacement for the Misuse of Drugs Act. Continued tinkering with the current Act simply won't do the job. It is time for a 21st century response to a 21st century issue. The original Act came into force in the mid-1970s. Since then, substances have changed, attitudes have changed, and our ability to treat those who suffer because of the addiction to any drug, whether it be alcohol, cannabis, pee, or any other substance, has changed as well. And I do mean treat, Mr Speaker. It is time to put the health system, not the justice system, at the centre of drug legislation. But that is a debate for another day. I do wish to talk about the provisions in this bill. But I'd also like to talk about just how much of a priority this bill has been to the government. It was first introduced in April last year. Its first reading didn't happen for another four months after that. It was referred to the Health Committee and referred back to the House in November last year, since which it has languished on the order paper, clearly not a priority to the current government. So when I hear the rhetoric about the war on P, I have to question just how much of a priority this has been to the government. Here we are in August, and this bill has been sitting on the order paper since November. It has not been a priority for the current government. So when I, when, I have no doubt that national members will stand up and praise the minister, and, 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 and the minister should be praised for, for some of the, the work in here, uh, particularly his supplementary order, the amendments that he brought in by supplementary order paper earlier this week. Uh, but when I hear the rhetoric around how much of a priority uh, drug abuse and the war on P is to this government, it's laughable, Mr Speaker, when you think of how long this bill has taken to pass through the House. But what does this bill actually do? Well, as, as, as the Minister said, the original intention of this bill was to reclassify ephedrine and pseudoephedrine, the, the, the precursor substances uh, for pure methamphetamine P. We know, Mr Speaker, that uh, as, as enormous a problem as P is in this country, at best, these changes will help to address maybe 30 per cent uh, of the supply of methamphetamine this, in this country. It's probably more like 10 per cent, if we're really realistic. Now, that is significant, and that is why we're supporting this bill, because, as I said, any measure that takes a positive step is worth supporting. But again, if we're honest, if we're realistic about just how much of a measure this is in tackling the P problem in this country, then we would realise that this is minor. This is small stuff. The real problem is these precursor elements coming across our border uh, and the flood uh, of ephedrine and pseudoephedrine coming in mainly from China and from other uh, parts of the world. Uh, so, Mr. Mr. Speaker, uh, I know that uh, people uh, across New Zealand are now going to have to forfeit their ability to get uh, probably the best uh, cold and flu medicine that is available. Uh, people, will, people will see that as, I think, a reasonable forfeit, uh, given uh, the rhetoric around uh, what the government has said about its war on pee. But in truth, uh, this, is, this is small stuff. 
And I have to say, having walked around Parliament uh, over the last few days and hearing the coughs and sniffles and, uh, and, and all the noise uh, that has been associated with some of the illnesses that are going around this place at the moment, I think, uh, I think the pseudoephedrine will be missed, uh, particularly around this place, but also around the country. We, we accept why it's being done, but let's just have a little bit of honesty uh, about just how important a measure this is. The other important aspect of this bill, uh, which, which only occurred uh, earlier this week, is of course uh, the changes uh, which will allow uh, the Minister to take uh, the synthetic cannabis products off the shelf uh, and will allow uh, the Minister to respond more quickly to new substances as, as they come uh, onto the market. Uh, we still have the problem that new substances can get onto the market before they are properly tested. That to me is one of the fundamental problems with the current Act uh, and is one of the most important reasons why we need uh, to totally review and replace the current Act. But I do congratulate the Minister on finding a stopgap measure uh, whilst Parliament does take its time to consider the Law Commission's review and to consider what options are available for a serious replacement for this Act but which allows us to get these products off the shelf whilst uh, a testing regime is developed to ensure that these substances are safe uh, before they are on the shelf again and, and able to be marketed uh, to our young people. Uh, I think one of the best things about this uh, is, is not so much the fact that, it's, that the substances are being banned for a 12-month period. Uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think prohibition has its limitations. Uh, but what is important is that they will not be visible, they will not be marketed, they will not be in dairies and liquor stores uh, and, and, and other places where you would go to find uh, normal products uh, that, you would, that you would expect uh, to take home bread and milk and lollies and all those sorts of things, just as I don't believe that tobacco should be on display alongside those products, nor do I believe uh, that things like uh, chronic and spice and dream uh, should be on the shelf alongside uh, those products either. And that is actually the aspect of, of these changes uh, that I am most pleased with. Uh, Mr Speaker, there, there are some other matters in this bill uh, that we are not so pleased with. And the Minister touched on this and, and he expressed his confusion over the opposition uh, to the, the uh, increased uh, enforcement on drug utensils. Now, sorry? Con concern, right. Um, thank you, Mr Speaker. I, I, I understand, I, we, we, know, we know what these provisions do and it does allow the, the current provisions to be enforced more rigorously. The fact of the matter is uh, that these provisions that ban the importation and the display uh, of, of drug utensils do nothing to reduce harm. And that, is, as I have said time and time again, is what should be at the centre of drug law in this country, is minimising and reducing harm. Anything that does away with utensils or makes it harder for users to acquire utensils actually increases the harm associated with drug use. It does not minimise it, and that is why we expressed our opposition to those provisions. To be fair, if we were going to be absolutely consistent, we would get rid of the original provisions in the Act. But what we want to see, as I said, is not more tinkering with this Act. It is a complete replacement of this Act. It's not all bad news, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, the removal of thalidomide makes absolute sense. It's not a mind-altering substance. Its place in the Misuse of Drugs Act is a complete anom anomaly and is absolutely ridiculous. The changes uh, that allow substances that come under the purview of the HASNO Act to also come under the purview of the Misuse of Drugs Act are also uh, eminently sensible and we support those. But, Mr Speaker, I cannot express strongly enough that the time the useful time for the Misuse of Drugs Act is coming to an end. It is time for a replacement. It is time for Parliament to take issues uh, relating to drug use and drug misuse in this country seriously to come up with new and innovative solutions that put the health system at the centre of our response to drug abuse and, and, and that time cannot come quickly enough. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Member... Dr. Paul Hutchison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In supporting this third reading, everyone.